I'm Laura McBride and welcome to my Egyptian inspired design set workshop. In this workshop we're going to be using some gold leaf, some chroming and also some beautiful hand painted work as well as some crystal work. I really hope you guys enjoy this workshop so let's get started. So welcome to my Egyptian inspired design set. So as you can see, I've already prepared my tips. Now on this one, I have used, I'm just going to pop those out of the way. This one, I have used uh, Black Widow from our core collection from Get Nailed by Lauren McBride. And then I have gone in on the inhibition layer of that with some gold leaf metal foil and then on top of that i have used a little bit just here and there from the classic chromes collection the matte chromes not the holographic chrome the matte and just dotted it into certain areas in order to be able to give a little bit more depth to that gold but i didn't want to cover all of it i wanted to look at make it look a little bit tarnished and I've kept it to a smile line. And then I matte top coated my black with Material Girl, again from Get Nailed by Laura McBride. And then that gold leaf, I have used my shiny top coat. So I'd rather be shiny again from my own collection to give that a beautiful shine and contrast between the matte and the shiny. So that's that first nail done. And then on this nail, I have done the same effect as I have on that French. So again, I went in with Black Widow and then I used my gold foil and then I've gone in with my chrome just to fill in. So you can see here certain areas to give it that tarnished look. And then I've gone over the entire nail with I'd rather be shiny, which is our shiny top coat so that is two of the five nails done really simple but beautiful we've got lots of depth in there which is exactly what I wanted so then on this nail I have done a coat of black widow and then again I have gone in with my chrome from the classic chrome collection and I have completely covered this nail with that chrome effect and then I've gone in with my shiny top coat so I'm going to grab this nail and do the rest of the nail art on here and I'm going to use my gel paint in black and we are going to create some hieroglyphics. So I'm going to go in and use my 10mm liner brush and the first thing I'm going to do is do a nice line down just off centre on this nail okay so I'm going to start just here and then come just off center starting at the cuticle line and then pulling that all the way down to the free edge of this nail okay so this is obviously being done on a long stiletto nail and the reason I chose this length now is because to be quite honest I think it's going to look fierce with this black and gold and hieroglyphic Egyptian style that we are doing on here but obviously you guys can do this on a shorter nail um, it's entirely up to you on how you do this it would also look really cool on toes as well so I'm just pulling that down, giving myself a nice line to be able to work to, okay? And then I'm going to go in with my 5mm liner brush to create my hieroglyphics. So I'm going to come down this right hand side of my line. So I'm going to come down here and we are going to pop some hieroglyphics in. So I'm going to pop in my central hieroglyphic first so that I know that we are working nice and central so just again using my black gel paint and the reason I'm using this is because that chrome is all 
encapsulated in that top coat okay so by using my gel paint here what's going to happen is this is just going to sit on top and once it's cured we don't need to seal this in okay so that is why I have done that so I'm just coming down the nail and creating my little hieroglyphics so I have been doing a little bit of research and this is called the feather like so and then we're going to do the water which is basically a zigzag line I'm taking it all the way to the edge of the nail and then I'm going to do the chick which is literally that it's a tiny little bird and then making sure that we put his little feet in there and also his eye and his wing and then we are going to do the mountain so just coming in here bringing that round and then it has a straight bottom and a straight edge just there it flicks out ever so slightly okay so they are our hieroglyphics on there so i'm going to pop that into the lamp for a cure and that's a 60 second cure and then while that's in the lamp we're going to crack on with our next nail so you can probably see the difference here on this nail and what i want to do is to create the eye here right in the center of the nail so by using our black gel paint on top of this black widow that has got a top coat of material girl on there you will see in a second exactly why i have done that so then we need to put in the eyebrow just along the top and then we have a little swirl coming out and under from that left hand corner of the eye so you can see that reflection there and where I'm going and then down here again from that corner there's another little flick just there and then we're going to put a line down the center okay so that's also going to go in the lamp for a cure and then i'm going to bring this one out and i'm just going to thicken up that first feather ever so slightly so it matches the second one and just refine that ever so slightly i'm going to pop that back in the lamp for another full cure so now while i'm here i'm going to do the third nail and we are going to do a beetle on this one okay so i'm going to come in here and do the wings so these are just teardrop shapes but quite a flat edge running down the center all right and then i'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and then bring that round and then fill in the rest of that space and again i'm using my five mil liner brush here and i'm just going to bring that up so it's nice and tapered to the point 
and then in here I'm going to bring that up and round so there's a tiny little gap between the wings and the bottom of the body and again just bring that round so it's nice and rounded like so and then taper that out to our edge and then fill in that negative space. So I'm just going to pull this round this way a little bit more, make it slightly more rounded. Now because I'm using gel paint here, I'm going to go in and do the legs of my beetle. So I'm going to come up from here and bring that out as a straight line and then bring that top up like so do exactly the same on the other side but i'm not joining this up okay to the body i want to have a slight gap there it's only ever so slight but it's there and you'll see why in a second so i'm just popping that in there and then i'm going to come out from the center section of the body and then bring that one down same on this side again leaving that very slight gap from the body and then coming here on the bottom and then bringing that down this way so again coming out from that bottom again leaving a gap and then pulling down making sure that they finish nice and level so now what I'm going to do I'm going to pop that in the lamp for a cure and while that one's curing I'm going to show you what's happening here with this eye so I'm going to go in with my chrome again okay and i'm going to use my flat chrome not my holographic chrome going in with my applicator and i'm going to go over that detail work and you can see this chrome is only sticking to the area that i put that black gel paint it is not sticking to my matte background so i've got a chrome cuticle cuff and then i've got that eye detail there so i'm now just going to go in with a clean applicator and burnish that in so i'm going to rub it really nice and hard and make sure that we've got that beautiful shine to our chrome and you can see that it's not sticking to that background in any way shape or form and I'm just going to go in with an old acrylic brush and just dust off any of those tiny tiny little particles that may still be on there now it's entirely up to you whether you go in and you just cover with top coat those areas that you've chromed or you can go over the whole thing with your shiny top coat so i'm going to go over the whole thing with my shiny top coat because then it's going to complement the rest of the design so i'm going to go in with i'd rather be shiny and you can see how that chrome really pops now with that top coat on there and it looks stunning against that black all the way over obviously if you're doing this on a client you want to steer clear of cuticles side walls and also make sure that you cap that free edge so that's going to go into the lamp for a full cure and then our beetle has had a full cure so i'm now going to go in again with that chrome so just tap it in and then go over the entire body that we have just created and that is why I have left those tiny little gaps 
because it helps to give definition to the body of our beetle. So going in with a clean applicator, making sure that it's nice and shiny. And then going in with a nice soft dusting brush just to remove any of those tiny little particles that are in there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to only cover my beetle because I want to keep my black nice and matte. So I'm going to go in and just go back over those areas and seal that chrome in with my shiny top coat. So going over the main body first, again I'm just using my 5mm brush here just to do that. Okay, and then the bottom of the body as well. So just almost just floating that out into that area that we want it to be covered. It's really important that you seal this chrome in because if we were just to leave it, the second our client washes their hands, that chrome would come off, okay? It would just rub away. So without sealing it, it's not going to last. So you can go in with your shiny top coat over the entirety of the nail but I wanted this contrast with the matte and our golden beetle. So once you've done that, that's going to go into the lamp for a full cure for 60 seconds. And that is our eye and golden cuticle cuff done. <coughs> so now I'm going to move on to this one and we're going to do a little bit of crystal placement. So I'm going to go in with my gem buddy. So this is my own product and it is absolutely perfect for your flat backs, pointy backs and also your caviar beadwork so I'm just going to grab a little bit of my gem buddy out and I'm going to come down this side of my line so I don't want to cover this line up I just want to lay this gem buddy down next to it and that is going to make way for our crystals okay so you can see that gem buddy just laying down there and I'm going to go in with these beautiful quartz crystals so these are black crystals these are all from crystal parade and they are absolutely stunning and I'm going to come down my line and I'm going to leave an ever such slight gap between the two or between all of my crystals but using the same size crystal as I go down so you can use any colour crystal that you like but I think by keeping it the same tone it's just giving it that little bit of bling but then it's not taking away from the artwork that you've done on there. So I'm now just moving my crystals around, making sure that they're as evenly spaced as they can possibly be. Okay, and then before I pop that in the lamp for a cure, I'm going to grab my black caviar beads. So these are new black caviar beads and they are jet black. 
So what I'm going to do in order to place these down, I'm going to grab a bit of my gem buddy and pop it down and then I'm going to dip my brush into my black caviar beads. And then roll them around in my gem buddy so they are fully encapsulated in that gem buddy. Okay, and then I'm going to pick them up and I'm going to place my caviars down into those spaces in between my crystals. Now this will give me my spacing for my crystals so if they're not quite sitting close enough to one another I'm going to just scooch them up so that they are. So I'm doing two caviar beads and then a crystal So one, two, and you can see that crystal needs scooching up ever so slightly, not a lot, but ever so slightly. And then one, two, another one on my brush just there. And then again, to scooch that up. And that crystal and that's the great thing about gem buddy it will hold your crystals in place until you're ready to go into the lamp and put them in for that cure and this is why I didn't go in for a cure prior to doing my caviar beadwork because I didn't want to get this spacing wrong so again scooching it up where needed and then going in with another two. So I'm almost creating like a, tra a chain of crystals and caviars. And then because I don't want a crystal right on the end of this tip, I'm going to do a chain of four caviars. Okay. I'm just going to scooch that one up slightly and then even out the caviars. And now I'm also, I'm just going to spin this around and scooch these out so I've got a nice straight line of caviars and crystals, which we wouldn't have had The pleasure of doing if we hadn't waited to do that cure okay and now I'm going to go in and put a caviar on the very center point of each of those crystals and it just makes it look like a beautiful piece of jewelry rather than having just a crystal that stops dead. So again, picking them up one by one and popping them on to that central point of each crystal. And because we've rolled them in that gem buddy, it means that they're fully encapsulated, so they're not going to lose their colour and we aren't going to get any pooling on the nail. So it has got all the gem buddy it needs to stay nice and secure on that nail. So these final ones just down here, I'm just going to add another one just on the end there. And then that's going to go now into the lamp for a full cure, which is 60 seconds. So now what I'm going to do, I have got my beetle out here and I'm going to pop a little bit of gem buddy down just here. Maybe a little bit more than that. And we're going to put a crystal on for his head. So I'm going to use a slightly larger black crystal, pop it on. 
like so. And then I'm going to go in and grab my gold caviar beads. And I'm going to do exactly the same with those as I did for my black caviars. And I'm just going to pop them into that gem buddy. Make sure that they're nice and fully encapsulated with that product. And then I'm going to go all the way around his head because it is black. So I just want to give it a bit of an outline coming from the body all the way around. And this is also going to help to secure this crystal because it is out on its lonesome. So we need to make sure that is going to stay there. And our caviar beads are going to make sure that that happens. So again, I'm just picking them up one by one because I don't want this gem buddy that dries shiny. I don't want that to spill out onto that matte background. I want it to stay nice and separated. So just going all the way around our little beetle's head. And then I'm just going to scooch those up and I can fit one more in there to connect to his body. Okay, I'm just going to scooch that crystal over ever so slightly and it will take the caviar beads with it. And then that's going to go into the lamp for a full cure. So our design set so far is as follows now i would probably change the arrangement of this ever so slightly there we go so we have got our french gold leaf and then we have got our full chrome with our hieroglyphics and our crystal placement and caviar beadwork and then we have got our shiny golden cuticle cuff with our golden eye and then we have got our full gold leaf with that chrome work in there as well and I'm just going to get rid of this because we don't need those anymore. And then we're just waiting on our little beetle to come out of the lamp and that will complete our set. So I appreciate this is really quite reflective. So there you go, you've got a little close up there. So you've got our, I love this chain. This would look super cool on going horizontally as well and also swagging across the nail and our hieroglyphics in there and then we have got our eye with our chrome work and then that gold leaf the depth that we've got in there is stunning and then our little beetle who has just come out of the lamp completes the look so we've created our beetle with our chrome against that matte black background and that crystal for his head and that completes this workshop i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please make sure you click the subscribe button and if you want to see any future videos just click them below thank you all so much for joining me and i'll see you all soon